Hello again. In this video, we'll be constructing a monostable mode, or what's sometimes referred to as a one-shot mode 5-5 five -five timer circuit, namely this circuit. We'll go through each step involved in assembling this particular circuit on a breadboard. By the end of this video, we'll have a circuit that looks like this for one to use and experiment with. When you press the button, the LED comes on and stays on for a duration set by this capacitor value and this resistor value. If you alter these two values, you can lengthen or shorten the amount of time the LED stays on. In the context of the circuit we'll be building, the LED stays on for about a second and then shuts off. It's, that's why the circuit's referred to as a one-shot circuit. It sends out a pulse of a set duration, then it turns it off. It's got one shot. <laughs> it's also something to note is it's referred to as being in monostable mode because the stable mode is what it's in right now while it's doing nothing. Whereas the non-stable mode is when you press the button and it emits that pulse because that doesn't last. The pulse itself is only going to run for a certain duration set by the capacitor and the resistor. So that's the non-stable mode. To build the circuit, one will need some form of DC power supply. This is a 9 volt to 5 volt power supply, but you could just as well use a 9 volt battery. It would work a breadboard and the following parts. A 10K ohm resistor, a 100K ohm resistor, a 330 ohm resistor, an LED, a 555 timer. I'm using an NE555N, but most any kind of 55 timer would work for this circuit. A momentary button that is normally open, some wire, a 100 microfarad capacitor, a 10 microfarad capacitor, and two 0.1 microfarad capacitors. They're often marked 104 on their outer casing. To get started, the first thing we need to do is connect our power supply to our breadboard. But not turning our power supply on yet. Next, we need to connect the power rails of our breadboard so that these rails are connected to these rails. We need to add a 100 microfarad capacitor to our power rail to take up any potential surges or brownout conditions that might occur while our 55 timer circuits running. Make sure to put the capacitor in according to its polarity. This side will go in the negative rail. Referring to our schematic, the next thing we need to do is add our 5-5 timer to the breadboard as well as we can go ahead and add our momentary button. What I want to make sure to orient the timer in the right direction, there's oftentimes a little divot to indicate pin 1 as well as the scallop at the top on some of them. We just insert it into the board then the momentary button. Just push it in. Just make sure if you're unsure which legs make contact when you push the button you can use a meter to determine that. To return to our schematic, the first thing it indicates we need to do is connect pin 8, the VCC pin, to plus 5 or 15 volts basically to our power supply the pin out on the timer starts at 1, then 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Connected it to the power rail. Next, we can go to pin 1. The schematic indicates we need to connect that to ground. The 
the next connection will be a 0.1 microfarad capacitor between ground and VCC. Sometimes this is included, sometimes it's not, but it's not bad practice to put it in there just to pick up any leftover surges that might be in the power rails while the chip is functioning. We can move down to the trigger pin or pin 2 and add in a 10K pull-up resistor. It's a pull-up resistor because it's connecting pin 2 to VCC through that resistor. So it will keep the state of pin 2 high until we trigger our momentary button. 10K. We can look down into a little more complicated circuitry from VCC pin 8 is connected through a 100K resistor to pin 7. 100K. Pin 7 is connected to pin 6 through just a piece of wire. So we're at pin 7. Now we just need a piece of wire to go from pin 7 down to pin 6. Connections made. And pin 6 will, the same rail the pin 6 is on, should be connected by a 10 microfarad capacitor to ground. Making sure to observe the polarity of that 10 microfarad capacitor. The black line side should be connected to the ground rail. Moving right along, the final connection on the right hand side is from pin 5 to a 0.1 microfarad capacitor and from that capacitor to ground. We can insert that 0.1 microfarad capacitor in the rail, the pin 5 rail, and then connect this end of the capacitor to ground. That takes care of the right hand side of our connections. To move over to back to the left hand side, we've already connected pin 2 through a 10K resistor up to VCC. We already have that in play. So we can step down to pin 3 where we can connect our output wire to our LED and eventually to a resistor and to ground. With our output line in place, we can go ahead and add the LED and a resistor to ground. Making sure to properly line the LED that its flat side needs to go toward ground. The round side needs to go back to the timer. And we will finish this particular connection off with uh, 330 ohm resistor. You could use a larger resistor. It'll just, the larger the resistor you use, the dimmer the LED will be. Making sure to connect this resistor on the cathode side of the LED, the flat side, to ground. Returning to our schematic, we can do the very last connection 
from the trigger pin we need a wire to go to the left hand side of our momentary button and then we need the other side of our momentary button connected to ground. We go back up to pin 2, enter the wire for our momentary button, and then connect the other end of that wire to the upper leg of the button. And we will finish by connecting this bottom leg of the button to the ground rail. If we've made all of these connections properly, we should be able to power this circuit and see it function. Let's see. Yep, it works. We push the button, and this particular resistor and capacitor combination is supposed to keep when we pull the trigger pin low, we'll trigger the 555 timer to send a high pulse out of pin 3, the output pin, down to our LED for a duration that's set by the value of this capacitor and this resistor and in our case it's around one second. If you'd like for your LED or that pulse in this monostable circuit to last sh a shorter or longer duration then you can use the following formula to calculate that duration and just select the, pro the appropriate resistor and capacitor combination and you just replace them on the board you'll just swap out this capacitor swap out that resistor to correspond to whatever duration your calculation has determined that you need. How does this formula work? You enter the resistance in ohms the capacitance in microfarads and have modified this formula so that all you have to do to use it is just look on the side of the capacitor that you want to use. If it says 47 microfarads, you'll just enter 47 there rather than having to do a whole lot of fancy conversion. The conversion part of this formula is taken up with this number. So to look at some examples, say that you wanted the timer to emit a pulse for around 1.1 or around 1 seconds. It's approximate. This, the formula is pre precise, but the components we use in electronics are not. They're anywhere from 5% to 20% difference between their labeled value at any given time. So this gives you the range in which you should be. You should be around 1 second of a pulse duration if you use a 100K resistor, you'll want to use it as 100,000 ohms times a 10 microfarad capacitor, just times 10, then times that particular number, and the result should be 1.1 seconds, which this is what our circuit, as it's currently built, does, is the timer emits a pulse for about 1.1 seconds. But you could add in, say, keep the 100K resistor, add in a 47 microfarad capacitor, and you'd end up keeping that line on for around 5.2 seconds. So, five times what our circuit is currently configured as. Let's test that. To do so, all we need to do is remove that 10 microfarad capacitor and replace it with a 47 microfarad capacitor, making sure to properly align the polarity of the capacitor and connecting it to pin 6. We can add power back to our circuit and push the button and it, this, the LED should stay on for around 5 seconds.
and it does. Uh, it was around five. Seems like a little more to me, but given the components, who knows, this could be 10 to 20 percent different in capacitance than its labeled value, as well as that resistor could be 10 to 20 percent off, regardless of what the gold or silver stripe indicates. But that's just a simple demonstration that These particular this particular formula will give you a decent sense of given whatever resistor value you select and whatever capacitor value you select it'll give you a decent indication of how many seconds the 5-5 timer will emit a pulse in its non-stable mode in the stable mode it's just going to be off it won't be emitting anything but you could have a 0.5 second pulse come out which is around 500 milliseconds using a 10k resistor and a 47 microfarad capacitor or you could make it a much shorter duration pulse so using a 1k resistor a 22 microfarad capacitor and you'd get around a 20 millisecond pulse and you can keep going down or you can keep going up you just eventually if you put like a gigantic capacitor in here it's better practice to go up on the resistor values and keep your capacitor values within a sort of reasonable range it may work but it gets a, the timer gets a little less accurate once you start s sticking huge capacitor values in there like over a thousand microfarads and you're starting to get it in limits of what the timer in terms of the timer's accurate, but you're getting toward the upper limit of its accuracy. I hope this video was helpful. If it was, make sure to click like and consider subscribing to my channel. Thank you.